Here is a strategy for writing procedures needed for regulatory compliance. By following these steps, you can create a strategic plan that will help you protect your organization from the risks of non-compliance. There are six steps. Step one, carry out a risk assessment. Carry out a risk assessment of your organization's activities so that you can determine the likelihood and potential impact of any potential problems. For example, what is the risk from money laundering? What is the risk from sanctions busting? For example, are you dealing with people on the US government's OFAC sanctions list? And what are the potential risks of data breaches in the case of data security? Those three are probably the main areas that you'll start to focus on. And this assessment will help you identify the areas that require more attention and will help you prioritize your efforts. Step two, check your content for legal and regulatory compliance. Stay legal. You need to review the relevant laws and regulations related to your industry sector and ensure that your policies and procedures align with those requirements. You can create spreadsheets or use specialist software to match each legal duty with the relevant sections in your policies and procedures. If the regulators come in and ask you to prove that you have policies and procedures and processes in place to meet a specific legal obligation, you can use this information to reassure them you do. You might need external advice to do this, experts in law, the regulations, or the relevant standard. We're not experts in law, so we can't help you with that aspect, but we do know some experts in ISO 2701 data security who might be able to help you in that area. Step three, develop your policies and procedures. The next stage is to create a detailed set of policies and procedures that address your organization's specific risks and vulnerabilities. In this stage, we'll talk about defining a content strategy, getting the knowledge, information written down, and improving the content. So let's look at what we might call step 3.1, define a content strategy. And in this context, define a content strategy means defining an information design model, understanding the user's needs, defining standards for voice and tone, and defining a approval process, and finally establishing the software that you'll use. By defining an information model, we mean, firstly, defining what content goes where. Does a piece of content belong in a policy document? A process diagram, compliance procedures, operational procedures, or guidelines, um, and what content goes into how-to guides for the particular applications that are used within the organization. It also means defining how you connect the procedures that staff use with the compliance procedures the regulators want to see that you're following. And that may involve defining some labeling or metadata to go into the documents to do that alignment and matching. It means understanding the user's needs. You might need to better understand the users and what they need. And in this situation, you have more than one type of user. You have regulators and you have your staff. Related to this stage is how the information connects to each other and how you'll keep it consistent. And with regards to consistency, that might involve creating a terminology guide so that certain buzzwords are described in the same way across all of the documentation. You may also need to define standards for voice and tone. A voice and tone guide can help ensure the policies and procedures have a consistent voice and use the appropriate tone for the users, the content, and the context in which they'll be used. You will also need to define the approval process, and that could involve creating a playbook on how to write new procedures and establishing the software you'll use. Microsoft Word is the de facto choice for many, but there are alternatives. 
And they might be better in having coherent, consistent, auditable and usable content. Step 3.2 is getting the information, the knowledge written down. The information might be in people's heads, in experts' heads, which your organisation needs to have documented, written down. You might need to have meetings to agree what the policies, processes and procedures should be, to agree who should do what, what should be done and in what order. And you also need to decide who writes the content. That could be the subject matter experts themselves, or it might be to get a procedures writer in who interviews the subject matter experts. And there are pros and cons for doing that. If the subject matter experts do the writing, that can be cost effective, but they might not write clearly. And you might need somebody like Cherry Leaf to come in and improve the content they might not have the time to do it. If you get a procedures writer to do it, the advantages of that is that it requires less time from the subject matter experts. It will be written clearly and consistently, and it will be well organized. There are some downsides. You have to pay for it, and you won't build up the skills to do it in-house unless you also get your experts trained in how to write procedures. Step 3.3 is improving the content. You might find the information is accurate and complete, but it isn't very usable. So you should check the content for usability. And there are a number of different criteria you can use. One is to ask, is the information clear? You can ask or observe your users. Do they tell you that they don't understand the information that you provided? You can ask people to follow the instructions. Watch them and see if the instructions actually enable them to complete the task correctly. Another measure is can users find the information they need and want? Is it taking them too long to complete tasks? Another criteria is, is the information coherent? Do the documents give them enough information, the information they need, or is it too complicated? Another criteria is, is the information consistent? Are they complying with the procedures? And another criteria is the information actionable. Do the procedures match with the reality of how things actually have to be done? Are users making mistakes? You could create a projects team dedicated to rewriting and improving the content, if that resource is available. You can also bring in outside resources such as Cherryleaf. We can work on some or all of the policies and procedures and write them in a way that's better. The advantage of this approach is that it minimizes the workload on your staff. And that activity can also involve creating the terminology guide and the voice and tone guide that we mentioned earlier. And we can also provide training to your staff so that they can rewrite the procedures and the policies in a better way themselves. Now that training would work if they have the time to update and improve the content. We can now move on to step four, implementing. And that involves as a step one, ensuring that all employees are trained on the new policies and procedures. And step two, implement effective monitoring and reporting systems to identify and addressing potential non-conformance. Step five is reviewing and updating. Review and update your policies and procedures on a regular basis. This is to ensure that they remain effective and relevant in the face of changing risks and regulatory requirements. And step six is to audit and update your policies and procedures. Carry out regular independent audits of your business processes and procedures. And this is to identify areas that might need improving and to ensure that your organization is fully compliant with all the relevant laws and regulations. So those are the six steps. If you need help, Cherryleaf provides policies and procedures writing services for organizations that need clear policies and procedures written. 
particularly organizations that know how to run their business, but they just don't have the time and skills in procedures writing. We also help organizations where their existing policies and procedures need updating or they need to be improved so that they're clearer, more complete and more effective. And we can also help if you want to train your own staff. We provide training courses in how to write policies and procedures. If you want to know any more information about how we can help you, contact us, best ways by email, info at cherryleaf.com. I hope you found these six steps useful.